This is the Crossing Bridges podcast, addressing the topics of leadership, criminal justice, and fatherhood. How can we become better leaders? Where are all the daddies? Why is crime at an all-time high? Here is your host, Bayonle Arashi. It is a very special episode of uh, Crossing Bridges podcast. Very special indeed. Only if you're watching this um, via video, uh, then you're going to know what I mean by special. Uh, we are actually growing as fast as we can on the podcast. It's really interesting that this is just like uh, the eighth episode of the podcast, and we have reached a very wide audience. People have been receptive to the podcast. And today I have... Uh, uh, the female agenda on the platform with all due respect, but we would love to hear from them, hear from uh, their opinion, hear what they think about fatherhood, about criminal justice, and every other issues that happens. Because even though we as men have come to acknowledge that we are responsible for uh, every family foundation, we're supposed to be the foundation of every family, we're supposed to be the leader of the house, but it always takes two to tango. That's the way I've always seen it, and that's how it is, and that's how God made it. So today, without much ado, I have uh, a guest that I want to introduce herself. So welcome to the podcast, ma'am. Can you please introduce yourself? Thank you. I'm Clanisha Babineau. I am um, a mother. I am a correctional officer sergeant. Um, I am also an entrepreneur, a beginning entrepreneur of She Is Me organization, which is to mentor um, women and children. That's what we're geared towards as far as growth. All right. For you listeners and viewers out there, I'm sure you can already imagine why she definitely has to be on the show and why she's here. I am talking and I have the privilege to speak to a sergeant of corrections uh, in case you are listening, maybe you are listening from outside of the United States, of course, we all know what a correction is. A correctional officer is uh, a, a security uh, officer that works in the penitentiary system, in the prison system in the United States, and of course, in every other culture. Um, United States has high level um, of correctional system. Um, so today, I'm very, very, very privileged to have Ms. Uh, Babino on the show, Science of Corrections, of course. So she's a supervisor. She sees it uh, in a bigger picture, in a larger way that many of us have no idea about. So, ma'am, already without saying much, how challenging is your job? Let's start from there. Uh, it can be very challenging because first and foremost, before being um, a supervisor, I walk into the system as myself. So um, it's me, myself, and I, uh, everything God made me, everything that um, my whole environment and my history that has shaped me and molded me to be who I am today. And then I have to take all of that and I have to walk into the prison system um, with the head on to know that I'm first and foremost supervising other people. Uh, it's a very diverse community. Um, I'm supervising men and women of all ages, uh, all cultures. And that is my main uh, point once I walk into it. On top of that, I can never forget in the back of my mind that I am a correctional officer, regardless of my title in the system. I'm still a correctional officer that has to manage uh, male inmates, um, different mindsets, um, different cultures, different backgrounds, different diversities, different beliefs, different languages. And mm -hmm. I have to walk in as myself and try to uh, divide myself into different aspects so that I can come across in the right way. And that, that is the most challenging thing for me is to, um, I've, I've managed to do it and I, I think I do it pretty well, I hope. And I'm growing and I'm learning because it uh, opens up my mindset. But the most difficult part of that is to um, zone yourself into the person that you're dealing with, the situation that you're dealing with. Sometimes the situations are simultaneously. Um, that you're dealing with. And that's dealing with either the officers or the inmates. On hmm. top of that, 
my position. I am a sergeant. I'm not above the other ranks. So I also have to position myself and divide myself from me to know how to respond to them as well, to respond to correction, to respond to the person giving the correction. So that's the difficult part of trying to take myself and zone it into each and every situation and still remain who I am. Professional. Wow. Excellent response. Um, I, I was just looking at you and just listening with keen interest uh, because um, luckily for me, I think I've had the privilege of working with you. Um, and I, I always say one of the reasons why I decided to start uh, the podcast was because I feel a lot of folks out there have no idea what goes on behind the walls. Um, that's number one. A lot of people do not understand that it takes a certain level of um, seriousness, seriousness, a certain level of courage. Um, I mean, extreme courage, um, a certain level of uh, determination for you to say, I want to go become a correctional officer. Uh, and that's why I'm, I choose the topic of leadership. I take it very seriously. And I want to say this here. I don't know if you ever hear this many, many times. I know you don't because I know we don't as, a, as an officer level to so say thank you for your service um, because what you're doing is not easy. A lot of people don't understand that if correctional officers are not there to keep these um, convicted uh, criminals behind the walls, um, they public will not have as much safety as they have today. Yes, there have been many challenges in the past and very recently uh, in the corrections, but it is it just shows you or tells people how challenging it, it is. So I, I know already that you, based on your explanation, you serve in a leadership capacity. Um, uh, so you are a leader on your own. So how, how my next question will be for you that how challenging it is uh, for you to um, especially with the fact that the the, 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 this, the country we're in today and the situation we live in today, a lot of people do not uh, believe women are supposed to occupy a certain position. Um, so how challenging has it been for you to manage the ego of the men that you manage? Because I know that even I as a male, it's a natural thing that we're born with. Uh, how, how has it been for you? Uh, tell us how challenging it's been for you as a leader in your role. Um, it has been very, very challenging. Uh, again, in a position of, I don't care whether you're a student, a leader, or manager, whatever you are, again, you have to be able to zone yourself into the situation that you're dealing with and understand the being that you're talking to or communicating with, mm -hmm. um, but it took me a long time to get there. Um, I can say it, and it sounds easier. It's easier said than done now. Mm -hmm. But it took me a long time to get to that point because I have always been a person um, that would be on the defense quickly. I have my my fight mode goes up. They say fight or flight. I was ready to fight. Um, so I came in. I'm a very dominant person. Uh, and because of me being dominant and have a strong mind, I also had to develop the sense to uh, to desensitize myself and get the message across versus uh, it's, it's about the delivery when it comes down to managing someone that possibly has an ego or uh, that struggles with the ego. Some people have it and don't even realize it. Some people have it and they're very proud of it. Uh, even women, not just men, but women. But it, it was definitely a challenge because on top of that, I'm not an old woman. I'm young. Um, when I first came into the system, I was very young. So to you have the, the biggest part to be able to manage someone um, with that type of challenge is uh, respect. When you get someone's respect, Everything else is smooth sailing. Um, you have to have their respect. You have to have interpersonal skills to where you know how to communicate. And sometimes you also have to know, know when to step away and know how to step away. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't even know how to, uh, you said, but before 
um, I, I forget real quick. You said, you said a very key point that I want to go back to, and I'm going to go back to it uh, based on the background of myself that is interviewing you today. Uh, I'm an immigrant. Um, I am from, uh, I'm from Nigeria. I'm from West Africa. And based on um, race, based on uh, uh, the, the multicultural diversity, based on how we grew up, it's a different scenario on how uh, we men grow up in that kind of area with our mentality and the right. way women women and women grow up in America. And I know where you work, like you said earlier, is there's a lot of diversity involved. Now, you said use the word dominant. So are you dominant by nature, naturally, or do you think it is the situation and the condition of your job and the place you find yourself that made you to have to dig deeper and come up with that spirit or come up with that kind of courage or thought to, to put you in that uh, uh, position? Because this is something people don't talk about. So I would yeah. love to learn and hear uh, about that from you. Okay, so I am definitely uh, a person that is dominant by nature. Uh, I have been that way. I used to be a lot stronger and aggressive than I am now. Um, one thing I will always say, and I'm a true firm believer in, uh, even when I'm talking to people that come into the agency, I tell them, um, you have to know yourself. And when I say know yourself, that means have a backbone. Even if you have some type of confusion going on, you don't know what path you're on, you never in your life let a career, job, or whatever make you. You always remain who you are yourself, and that's the only way you can critique yourself and better yourself. And you have to do that by uh, minimizing yourself to a certain degree to understand, because if you don't humble yourself, you're not going to be able to understand that. Um, so I am dominant by nature. Uh, I came up that way uh, because of my upbringing, because of the environment that I was around. Um, some of it was unfortunate, but a lot of it was fortunate when I think about um, the lessons that I've learned today and the things that I know now. I'm glad that I was able to experience those things, um, because if not, the generation now a lot of them are clueless and I'm thankful to God that I'm not clueless. <laughs> that's, that's very exciting. And I, I want to say thank you to you again for that answer and for your um, uh, extreme uh, uh, boldness and courage to come on the show and to share this uh, because a lot of people do not, um, are not patient enough to understand that some people um, have to, do not have a choice than to uh, just be who they are. I mean, you just said it now that you have to develop those capacity based on your experience growing up and based on the community you grow up. But also you have managed to use those things that were supposed to be a challenge for you as a form of strength. And now you are not just using it as a form of strength to serve yourself, but to serve the state of Texas and humanity and you introduce yourself at the beginning um, about the project that you have as a CEO, uh, which is also something that you don't hear every time that someone that works full time to start with, not only that someone that does something as challenging as you do, I mean, using the word challenging intentionally because a lot of people might think when you say you work in corrections and you're using the word hard or tough, that you're probably making it too big. Uh, it, only when you experience it, that's when you understand. But I know for a fact that it's a challenging job, uh, but you're still able to uh, create a company. Uh, and I'm sure there's a story behind the title you gave your organization. So please tell us the story. Okay, so uh, She Is Me was a vision God gave me in 2019. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was November of 2019. Um God gave me a vision to reach out to women. I've always had um, the understanding that my purpose was to empower other women. Um, I know that I have a gift of healing. That's something that was prophesied to me years ago, and it gave me a better understanding. But in 2019, I was lying in my bed, and I think I was studying or watching a video, and God gave me a vision to um, 
open up an organization that for women and their children, their teenage girls, let me not say their children, but teenage girls, um, mm. and the woman, it could be of any status. I don't care if she's single. I don't care if she's married. I don't care if she's not in the home. But the purpose of it mainly was to bridge the gap of misunderstanding and misguidance between uh, women and their daughters. And mm. that's a that's ranging from the ages of 13 up until about 19 or 20. Um, as the years went by, uh, he brought in my vision and really in all actuality, um, it's not only going to be contained to those teenage girls. The society now, most of the this generation, the girls are looking at social media um, that has a big, the hugest impact on this generation, tell you how you're supposed to look, tell you what's pretty, what's not pretty. Um, everybody's looking for validation of likes. They're looking mm -hmm. for validation from their friends. We have this new thing called selfies. Um, these are things that we're not, uh, we're not attention to. Yeah, and it wasn't available in my era coming up as a woman, coming up mm -hmm. as a teenage girl. So there is a misunderstanding between women of my age, anywhere from 35 to 50, and their daughters because the communication is broken. And she is me is supposed to bridge that gap because somewhere in that miscommunication, um, we've lost our identity. So the women, we can only teach what we know to our children. And mm -hmm. we can only do our best to teach. Some of us have traumas and um, may shut down. Even the men may shut down or shut themselves off instead of telling someone and going through the uh, bits and pieces of the process of what may have caused. Some and most some people will just shut down and be like, um, do what I said do because I told you so. But they mm -hmm. don't want to give an understanding. And the generation now, because it's so vocal, Everybody wants the kids now. It's a why, why. When we came up, if you ever ask your parent why, you get a smack in the face. You do. You, know I mean? you will. Yeah. You so will be. Exactly. So the generation now, we teach our children to unfold those feelings because we also realize that when we were kids, uh, we couldn't ask why. But as we got older, to some degree, it created a, a, a barrier to where we felt like we couldn't speak out no more. So now you see us in our 40s and our 30s, and we're speaking out now because we were confined to not speaking out then. Hmm. So the communication uh, barrier is like not there for the women and their daughters. Um, instead of the daughter hearing the mother, social media makes more sense. They don't understand that social media is only going to show you the highs. They're not going to show you so that she is me is supposed to be able to bridge that gap so that we can start to love one another again. And, um, you know, it may help the mothers learn how to be more of a mother. Uh, I'm by a long shot. I'm not a perfect person. It's, it'll help me. I'm going through some things myself that's teaching me now um, to have a bigger, uh, a bigger view of things. View of things yeah. Um, there's a misunderstanding because I'll sit there and I'll be like, I don't understand why, but I'm, you know, oh, that's yeah. that's really really impressive, and that looks like, um, based on my understanding on your explanation, which is also part of what uh, I do personally with uh, my uh, life coaching, and again, like I said, our path cross because we work in the same um, agency, um, probably. Until you, until your explanation now, I tend to understand what your project is all about, which is more or less like a fisher of women, a fisher of younger women to help them, to help to shape their uh, life, their thoughts, their opinion for with some things they think they know. I'm a father of two teenage girls, and I know the conversations that I have with them every time. You cannot tell them how to do things once they turn they are in their teenage years, but you can always be there for them as a guide. And uh, one thing I think I have been able to discover from your tone, uh, which I'm grateful for on your behalf is, uh, it sounds like you have uh, a very, um, um, I, I don't know how to put it, a strict uh, a religion background or a faith background. 
uh, which I think is probably going to help to have to strike a balance in between what you want to do and, and how you want to achieve it. But in the meantime, how have you been uh, able to execute some of your plans? Are they going as you plan? And are there areas that you think uh, there, are, there are lacks? And what, what do you think you need support in? Um, share with us. You never know who's listening. That's right. Um, so it definitely is not going the way I planned. Uh, number one, I do realize that God is challenging me and pulling me out of my comfort zone. My comfort zone was uh, singing and music. Um, it is true your gift will make room for you. But God has pulled me out of my comfort zone. So for me, when he gave me the vision, the first thing I did was saying, you want me to do this? Hmm. Me? Like, how am I going to do this? Um, so uh, I think procrastination has been a big part for me, uh, a big barrier, a big challenge for me. And that's another thing that helped me back. Um, believe it or not, I am shy. So I'm not one to just go out and start approaching and uh, put myself out there like that. Uh, I am very big on praying. <laughs> so, uh, and I do understand now that God will not uh, put you in a position where you're not ready. Hmm. He'll hold it back from you. So it's definitely like not going the way I planned. Because in my mind, okay, God, you gave me this vision. I wrote the vision and I made it plain. I put it on paper. And now I'm waiting on God to just put everything in my lap, right? It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen that way. So it's very... Uh, it's very true. Uh, the word says faith without works is dead. So you do have to put your hand to the plow. You do have to get out there and do the work yourself. And if you don't move, if you don't move on anything, nothing's going to move. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to a, a, a mentor recently and something that keeps sticking in my mind was probably like I talked to her about three or four weeks ago. She kept saying, just do it. Just do it. Just stop. Yes, just start. That's exactly what she said. Just start. She said, don't wait on anything. Don't wait on, just start. Because she, she said, later on down the run, you'll start. Everything is not going to be put into your hand. So it's definitely not, not going the way that I planned for it to go. <laughs> but uh, I'm grateful. That's a very interesting view. Um, really appreciate you uh, sharing about uh, your job uh, as a security supervisor with the state of uh Texas, uh, thank you for what you do, uh, for what you plan and proposing to do and doing right now for the young ladies, uh, fishing them out and trying to give them the orientation. You know, as we reach home stretch on the podcast, because we only have 30 minutes, we really hope your message gets out there and listened to uh, and being listened to by people that need to give you the uh, platform, the opportunity to speak. But uh, I want you to assume real quick, ma'am, uh, that you are uh, talking to um, someone that is a prospective uh, target, could be a teenage girl, could be someone that you want to speak on their platform. What will be your message in about a minute or two before I ask you the three questions I always ask every of my guests? Um, something I would like to say to my target audience is there is um, a possibility of reuniting, reconciliation between the broken relationships, between mother and daughter, that you also have a purpose in life versus mm -hmm. what the society is trying to show you. So you can do that. You, you have the resources to build your confidence. All you have to do is just reach out, say so, and let's mm -hmm. dig in and pull those things out of you so that you can birth out whatever God put in you. Absolutely. I'm I'm very impressed with that. And I assure you that whatever we can on the on the podcast do to share your message, to spread your message, to give the platform, because at the end of the day, uh, we feel if there are more leaders uh, such as you and others so, or other people that are willing to pick up the leadership cross, leadership mantle and go ahead and lead, uh, it will be it will be for the better of our community, for our state, for our country at large. Uh, as we go forward. Um, so thank you again. Uh, I'm going to ask you uh, a quick three questions. Uh, answer it to the best of your capacity. Uh, it's something that we always ask because the podcast is simply designed to um, take care of our leadership uh, situation that we have 
uh, lack of fathers in the house, and of course the high rate of criminal uh, criminals on our streets. And uh, when you look at it, when you watch TV these days, all you see is crime. Um, and it used to be, um, it has never been, uh, been, been better, but it used to not be as bad as it is right now that now it is the teenagers that are committing the crimes. Uh, so uh, the first question will be, do you think leaders are born or they are made? Uh, what, do you, what do you think about this particular question? Are they made or they are born? I would say both. Um, a leader is a leader is born and um, into whatever capacity God made them to be. The only way for that leader to be made is to be developed by the things that they take in, the environment, the wisdom or knowledge that they're given or what's, whatever they have uh, taken in as far as reading. It could be reading. It could be something someone said. It could be something that they saw. So I would say both, but it also has to connect with their passion that they have in their heart. They actually have to want to do it. Hmm. So, yeah. I'm I'm always very excited when I ask this question because you hear a different definition from different people that have answered it, and that's what makes it beautiful to, for you to have that um, idea of what a leader means uh, in your own mind and to be able to express it and share it without missing words. And my second question it will be, uh, what do you think? And it's, I'm very excited asking you this particular one uh, because you are the opposite gender. Uh, what do you think makes a good man? Hmm. Definitely having um, a relationship with God makes a good man uh, because having a relationship with God will teach them how to love humanity. I don't care whether it's women, children, their brothers. Uh, it teaches you how to love others and it teaches you how to have a grace and not respond um, in a way that you feel like you have to be vengeful because um, from my perspective, from my uh, observation, I'm not a man, but um, I know men are very, uh, are created to be the dominant person. They're created to be a natural born head. Um, so says the Bible, you know, so they are the head of whatever uh, house that they are um, overseeing. They are overseers. So to be a good man, you definitely, to me, have to have a relationship with God or have some type of uh, belief system where you have structure. Mm. Because if you don't have structure, you'll be all over the place. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I, I have to take that to heart, too. Um, having God as a foundation and have, having a belief system. Um, I'm going to add that to my to-do list because we're all trying to uh, play this game and be a better man every day. And I really appreciate you for that one. The final, final, finally, uh, the final one will be: uh, What is one quote um, that drives you that you live your life by, and that you always love to share with anyone? What is that one quote that you had somewhere, you've seen somewhere, or it's created by you and you live by them? Actually, the quote that I live by is actually created by me. I haven't heard it yet, but um, and it's regarding leadership. Um, every good teacher or leader must first be a good student. Hmm. That's it. You have to be open to learn. If you're not open to learn, there is no way you can lead someone else properly. Wow. You have to be willing to learn to be a teacher. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's going to be it on the show. Um, thank you very much for sharing your, out of your extremely busy schedule, for sharing your thoughts about your work, about your role, about your position. And of course, uh, the project that you have going forward, she is me and uh, we on uh, Crossing Bridges, wish you all the best and a lot of success in it. And um, of course, we will be in touch and we'll see how we can have you on the show another time to come share with us. Uh, in the meantime, uh, just uh, how can the listeners and the viewers of the show reach out to you in case they want to call you for speaking engagements or hear your thoughts or listen to you uh, about more about your project and what you're doing. Okay. They can reach me by, uh, on my Instagram. I have an Instagram. She is me. She is uniquely me. 
Um, it's on Instagram. Either you can do that or you can reach me by email, clinicia.babano at gmail.com, spelled C-L-I-N-I-S-H-A dot B-A-B-I-N-E-A-U-X at gmail.com. Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming, guys. There you have it. That's another, That's been another fantastic episode of Crossing Bridges. It's been my pleasure bringing it to you. And uh, till I see you guys again next time, uh, you guys keep chasing your dream, believe in your dreams, believe in your aspiration, believe you have a calling, believe you are important, believe there is a reason why you are on this planet. And I'll see you guys again next time. Go yeah. willing. Bye-bye now. Have a good one. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Crossing Bridges podcast with Bayonle Aranshi. Your comments, suggestions, and ideas are welcomed. Follow Bayonle on all social media platforms at Bayonle Arashi or visit www.bayonlearashi.com for coaching and speaking engagements. See you next time.